Kitten. Kitten, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Kitten. Come on. Come on out. There she is. <laughs> what you doing? Hey, Kitten. How's it going? How's it going? You say hi to everybody? You say hi, you just here to beat me up. And he just showed up to beat me up. Oh, such a sweetheart. So sweet and affectionate. Look at her, she just goes limp as soon as you touch her. And then bites you. And it's time to eat you. Yep, expect lots of tears, scrapes, and holes in my hands over the next, I was gonna say a few months. Probably more like, uh, what, a few years? I still have scratches all over myself from pumpkins sometimes. What are you gonna do? What's the plan here? What's the plan here? You coming down? <laughs> never stops never stops this is the most hyper kitten i think i've ever been around she plays and plays and plays sleeps and plays and that's what kittens normally do but not this one mostly play a whole lot of play i have to leave you for a few minutes you're gonna be okay you're gonna be okay you'll be all right yeah i'm gonna go out to the curse space and show people some stuff yeah, she should be fine. She's pretty good at entertaining herself. Jeez. Ah, those things are sharp. Those things are really sharp. I should be using a toy and then I wouldn't have to worry about my hands getting torn up. But she's so soft and fluffy. This is the softest cat I've ever touched in my life. She's so freaking floofy and silky and sharp claws. It's got those sharp kitten claws. We get that. Do you get it? Cute collar, right, Turbo? It's her first time wearing a collar. Uh, bell on this. Way too dangerous. She keeps getting it stuck in her mouth. That would drive me crazy. I wouldn't want a bell hung around my neck at all times. However, it would be nice to know where she is, but I have an air tag holder to put on this, so that'll solve that problem. Even though it's a safety collar that should pop off very easily, uh, I caught her pulling on that bell a few times. It wasn't coming off. I don't want her to hurt herself. Okay, I think she's done. It's time for a nap. No, it's never time for naps. Hey, Terps. You gonna see your kitty? Yeah. You guys are gonna be best friends someday. Almost there. Yeah. She wants to give her kisses so bad. Just a couple days ago, she wouldn't let him get this close. If, mm. But if you're laying on the ground and I were to drag a toy over him, she would run right across him, no problem. If there's a toy involved, then they can get pretty close. But she is sleepy. She's very sleepy. Okay. All right, let's go look at some plants. You can't come. You have to stay here. You can't come with me. You got to stay here. Sorry, Turbs. Uh, Gross space. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. Got a kitten. We'll talk more about her in another video. Still some adjusting to do. Still learning about the kitten, about her personality. It's also Halloween, hence the skeletons and mermaid skeletons. Do mermaids have skeletons? Probably not. Like more of a <laughs> cartilaginous type of fish. Pumpkin, not that into the kitten, but she's getting there. Cats take longer to adjust. Uh, McDowell's inside. Done some growing. It's gotten bigger since last time y'all saw it, and it was just a couple leaves that were hoying sideways. Yep, okay, that was fun. End of that story. Now here's what I'm sure y'all really want to see. Air space, full of plants, everything got moved in over a period of a couple of days. It dropped down to 28 last night, so that was the final push. About two things left outside at that moment, so it didn't really matter. I was able to spread out the moving of the plants this year, which was really nice. Normally, we just have a random ice storm or something that comes in or sudden drop to like 25 when it's been in the 70s. And then you have to rush to move everything in. But I had a few days to do it, and it was much more enjoyable to do things that way. Very, very much more enjoyable. That was a weird way to say that. I'm gonna try and turn the heater off. Sometimes it listens, and sometimes it doesn't. I think it listened. There we go, some quiet, that's much better. Still some cleaning up to, like I said, I just got everything in here, so not a ton to show at this point. Well, there are a lot of plants. There are plenty of plants to show. I haven't placed anything yet, and that's because, well, there's more I want to do in here before I get everything set up to being exactly how I want it to be. So for the most part, a lot of the plants are on the shelves, but you can see there's still a good amount on the floor spread around in here. The power palm over here. The new palms, their video should have been out right before this one. On the ground, Monstera, Metaphylum, this guy over here, the Freckles, Croton. I'm gonna be moving that one up here onto these shelves, but there's still some things I wanna do with the plants. And it's gonna warm up in just a couple of days, and I figured it would make the most sense to if I'm gonna be like maybe repotting or 
doing major prunes on them to do that outside of the grow space. And I would like to give everything at least one more spray, like heavy, heavy drenching spray before setting them down exactly where I want them to go. So even though I moved everything in, I think I'm probably going to be moving it all back out in a few days. Well, in a week. I don't have to do things that way, but I know I'll just be kicking myself in the long run. I don't do one more heavy, heavy spray on everything that's out here because the mealybugs this year were very tricky this summer. They were a mealybug that just did not want to die no matter what I used. Soap, name, I think it was more just that they're multiplying faster than I could spray and get rid of them. And the troublemaker plants, as far as those mealybugs are concerned, are over there in the corner. So the big croton, the variegated philodendron, one of the bonsais is over there, and then a coconut palm. I sprayed those down extremely heavily with just a neem and some soap right before moving them in, but they need a, a few more sprays. The croton that's back here, I'm thinking I may actually defoliate it, which I know probably sounds crazy like well why would you do that but it would be a lot easier to just take all the leaves off of it just strip it down and heavily wash down all of the wood that's on there and make sure to do a heavy drench in the soil to kill anything that might be down there beneath you know down around the roots so that's I, it's a lot of work and it's gonna make the plant look kind of ugly for a while but in the long run Probably the way to do things, because the croton is very difficult to spray for bugs. The foliage on it is so waxy, it's so hydrophobic, that anything that has moisture in it just repels and beads right off of it. Even neems and soaps, you know, the soaps, the great thing about them is they're sticky and tacky. I've tried adding just a little bit of soap in with the neem oil, which doesn't really do much. In theory, it would help it stick, but you know, it's oil and soap, so they don't really go together. And this croton, it's a trooper. So even if I do strip it down, it'll put out new leaves within a few weeks by the time the holidays roll around. Not the, I mean, that's what, the holidays, that, like Thanksgiving. I should probably know what the holidays are before I start saying that kind of stuff, shouldn't I? Two years, January into February, it will have flushed back out and have new growth on it. And uh, I won't be constantly trying to get a spray into it, right? Just seems like the way to go. That might be the right move. I'm also considering maybe tenting off the plants that have been a problem. I know that they're in here with all the others who think, well, what's the big deal? But they've all been together. And I realize that as well, but I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> 28 degrees. I had to move them in. I didn't really have anywhere else to put them because the house is just chaos right now from the construction going on inside the home. So I could tent off those plants and potentially bug bomb them. I'm going to hold off on that and do a few more sprays first and see how they're looking. And uh, then uh, let some time pass, probably about a month, and see if there's been a resurgence of any bug. And if there hasn't been, then I will not rip the leaves off. If there has been, then the foliage is coming off of that one. I know it sounds harsh, but trust me, it will be fine. It'll be totally fine. It's a croton. Half the time it drops its leaves on its own anyways. Yeah, so they're Devo plants. I also didn't set anything, pardon the voice crack, didn't set anything up on the shelf in the middle of the pond this year. I'll see a reason to. The heat from the heater up there, the very dry air that blasts down, really does a number on the plants that I put there. Prior to having this new fancy heater, plants did really well in this spot. There was always humidity around them, which of course the plants enjoyed. But last year I had the uh, metanillas up there. They really didn't seem to appreciate it. There are a lot of crispy leaves, so I have them off to the sides this year. I also have added a table to this side of the grow space so I can keep things up and off the ground. So there's now a table on each side of the pond here, Eureka Palm over here in years past, well, up until last year, I had that sitting right over here. There was also a fish tank in the spot that is gone. Don't need that out here anymore. That freed up a nice amount of space. Not necessarily going to fill it with a plant. I mean, I'm sure I will, but that wasn't the intention. It was more just so not having to squeeze my way around and in between everything. And then there'll be much more up off the floor once I move some things out and do some rearranging on the shelves. There's a whole game of Tetris. There are a few more lights that need to be installed. I have a light that needs to go up there. So there'll be a light coming from both directions on that shelf. 
I was going to put another light up on this shelf above the begonias. I should go over there since we're talking about them. I brought a lot of begonias in this year and uh, they are up over here. This is a drier spot and that's usually where begonias do better. Just have to wait and see how they do. I do think having one more grow light above them would probably be something they would appreciate more than likely. Begonias can be very easy to overwinter so long as they don't get sopping wet. The better the light is though, the better the flowering will be because they'll keep flowering all winter long as long as they have enough light. So it's one of those things, I'm just gonna give it some time. I don't wanna go buy another light and waste the electricity and the time putting one up if I don't have to. And I have enough begonias to basically fill up this entire shelf. There'll be some other plants up there that can take the drier conditions like the uh, lickety split, the metaphyllum by Pinatifidum, that's up there. I'll have another croton that goes up there and um, some uh, ficus elasticas that will go up there as where, uh, as where. Just plants that like things more on the dry side. Look how great the bird's nest fern is doing. It was tucked away by the fountain in the backyard. So y'all didn't get to see it that well during the summertime when it was outside. It was getting a good amount of shade and a ton of moisture. And it has just grown and grown and grown. Things turn it into a beast. Oh, and this shelf's gonna be bananas and heliconias. And there's some elocasia just hanging out there. Talked about that <laughs> epipenum pinatum last time. It's, uh, it's had a rough go. The summer was really hot and it stayed in here all summer because it has rooted itself to the wall. It's growing up the walls in here. So I couldn't take it outside. I could have, but I didn't want to strip it off of the walls. But it's perking up and actually seems to appreciate the uh, increase in humidity since I brought all the other plants inside. This guy, this is a disso cactus. This needs a new pot. Look at that. Almost literally hanging by a thread there. And then um, everything else are things that y'all have pretty much seen. Just <laughs> stuff that's in disarray at the moment. So Bougainvillea, I'm gonna let that hang out over here because it's warm and it's dry. That's generally, it's jam, right? Bougainvillea, Villa, sorry, Bougainvillea. I've always called them Bougainvillea, but I know it's not how you're supposed to pronounce it. They usually like this condition. So see how that does right there. It could end up just being really upset about it and dropping all of its leaves and everything. Typically when I overwinter a Bougainvillea, I try and keep them in more of a cool, dry situation. Think more like Mediterranean style overwintering. What same thing I would do for oleanders or gardenias, citrus trees, those things. I don't have a space for that anymore. This whole garage is hooked up to that giant heater, so it's just, it's, it's, it's warm. Pretty much warm in here everywhere. The closer you get to the garage door when it's really cold outside, the cooler it is. But not enough for plants that I just like to keep more on the dormant side. Does that make sense? Hopefully, and it's gonna stay there. We'll see what happens with it. I think it'll be great. And if not, that's okay. We're just learn it, learn it as we go here. Strawberries and cream heliconia, that is in the aquaponic system. I want that thing to just have moisture and access to the nutrient at all time because it is a nutrient hog. Need to divide that up. So that's another thing that'll be going on <laughs> in a week or so when I'm pulling plants back out to work on them before I bring them in here. Otherwise, I think that's, all there is to say, the gingers, they're still doing their thing. When these go dormant, I just pull the foliage off and I just shove them underneath the tables, make sure they stay dry. That's it, that's all I do with them. Sometimes they'll keep going well into January, it just depends. Every year is different. I have a feeling this one's going to keep going for a while though, because it's still pushing up those big, pretty ginger inflorescence on them. Hibiscus are still growing and flowering. The hibiscus had been in here about four or five days now. I brought those in first. It's looking good too. The tie. Um, I didn't. I didn't do it. That was me. I didn't do that. Someone was walking through here and thought, "Oh, these leaves are in my way," and they just snapped those. When I say someone, it was somebody who's working on the construction in the pool. I had been leaving the garage door unlocked so they could come in here and warm up because it's pretty cold outside. And they were keeping some of their stuff over there on the table, like their gloves and boots underneath the heater to dry off. And uh, someone decided that they didn't feel like just walking around these leaves. They just, they just snapped them. I, uh, it ticks me off, but at the same time, it's just a plant. And I'm not going to assume that the majority of people understand what it takes to grow a leaf on a monster, which is really nothing. They grow very well on their own. It's just, it's a tie, so it grows more slowly. Two leaves, that's like a couple months worth of work there 
work meaning like you splash it with water sometimes. It's just it's more it's just rude. You don't just snap people's leaves on their house plants. That's the thing that bugs me about. It. It's not because of what it is. It's just why. Why would you do that? But like I said, I don't care and I'm over it. Here's the bananas, some other plants that still need to get put away. I still have a gorilla cart full of smaller plants that are over here. A lot of plants that were not necessarily last minute decisions. I knew I was going to be bringing in the oleander and the spindle palm, and then I have a Musa of Florida over here, but like the Persian shield, I know it doesn't look great, but that's because it just was ripped out of its planter a couple weeks ago and I hadn't planted it up in anything. So I didn't know if I really wanted to bring it in. Then I was like, I'll just bring it in. So it's just some sticks on a root ball right now. I will be cutting all that down to like this much wood and potting it back up. And there's a really big, pretty begonia in here somewhere. It's heading down there. You can see that better when I get it hung up over there with the begonias on the begonia rack. The light there needs to be replaced. I put an order for that so that can be here hopefully next week. I want to make sure that when I have plants moved out, that that's also when I come in here and work on the lighting. So it's not that easy to walk around in here with ladders when there's, you know, you need a place to put the ladders. You can't have plants all over the place. Right here, this is a big improvement I have made out here this year. It's just, I know, it's just a garden hose. It doesn't seem that exciting. This thing is hooked up to a beast of a pump and it, I don't know, if I'll be able to show it to you. I hope so. Ugh. There it is. Big, big, very heavy. And it's loud and gurgly too. I believe that's a quarter horsepower. Might be a half, can't remember, sump pump. That's about 5,000 gallons an hour. And it actually has enough pressure to pump water through a garden hose. There are a lot of pumps that are very powerful when you hook them to a garden hose. You just don't get much pressure. With this, I'm getting about the same pressure as I would get from just the garden hose that's hooked up outside that I can't use in here because we have to turn our water off during the winter time. The reason this is so exciting, at least for me, is because I can control the water better by being able to put a valve and a switch. There's a switch that attaches to this. So I can walk around and water and switch off, walk around water, switch off without making a giant flooded puddle on the ground, just a river of water rushing through. And if I need to use anything that works through an injector system, then I can do that with this right here. No problem, it'll work just fine. I need to like use a broad sprayer for some neem, something of the sorts that'll screw right onto the end of the hose and it'll be just like I'm outside. It's just going to make life so much easier being able to have something that I can hook to the end of the hose, a hose end sprayer, right? In the grow space. So if I wanna go through and fertilize, with a conventional fertilizer, I can do that without having to mix into a bucket and try and use pumps and the whole entire injection system, it's annoying and I don't enjoy it. If it's not that easy to do, then not as likely to stay on top of it either. This is going to make that more of a possibility. I still, I have a, a, what is it, a hose holder that can attach to this, but I don't have the pieces yet to attach it to there just yet, but when I do, that's going to be great. I'm, this is, I'm so excited about this. That's going to be a freaking game changer. Having a hose out here that actually has the pressure of a hose and the functionality of a hose. The water in there isn't pure by any means. There's lots of tannins and there's debris in there. So I won't likely be using a spray head on there because it's just going to clog up. I've tried and they clog up very, very quickly. But even without that, it's going to speed up being able to water and being able to blast the plants off. They get dusty and sometimes I confuse the dust with spider mites and then spend several months trying to treat for spider mites when they weren't even really that big of a problem to begin with. Being able to blast the foliage, that's going to be so, so, so nice. And I haven't decided yet about this shelf. I know this is like my second, third time coming around back to that because I never completed the thought there. If I don't end up keeping plants on it, then I'm going to take it off because it's just kind of silly to have it there for no reason at all, right? I did adjust the angle of the vents on the heater up here, but you're really not supposed to adjust them too much according to the manual. You're supposed to be opened up all the way and having them pointed down, shifted down, can slow down, restrict the flow, and potentially overheat the heater. So I don't want to adjust them down too terribly far. As is right now, the air is mostly blowing into the area where this desk is, instead of more directly into the pond. Some of it's blowing in there, but not as much as last year. Last year it was really blowing right into the center of the water and uh, getting the plants that were up there. Regardless, the crates gotta go. Those look bad. They're, they just happen to end up there during the chaos of getting everything moved inside. I'm stoked. I'm so freaking happy to have this done, to have everything inside 
it's a big part of every single year because it's a fairly big project. It feels good to have it done. It's not like I get sad about having to do this because there's so much reward in having done it. Does that make any sense? Oh, and I'd like to install another grow light right around here. I just have to prune that frond off the Eureka Palm, get it out of the way and have one right up there to shine down in here because it's hard to get enough light onto that Eureka Palm. So she says some of the trunks are pressed directly or some of the stems, I should say, some of the fronds are pressed directly up against the ceiling because it's gotten, it's gotten pretty big. This thing's done a lot of growing. It's a beautiful plant. Eventually I'm going to have to chop some of those trunks down to keep it fitting in here though. Yeah, feels good to have it done. Who's ready for indoor gardening 2023, 2024? What was I saying in the last tour? Off season, off season gardening. That's how I think of it. Like November into February, I consider that the off season because it's just inside doing the indoor gardening stuff. And then all of a sudden it's game time, warms up, get outside and start getting things done. You can spread the plants out. They don't like being pushed this close together. There are some benefits to it, humidity wise. If they're actually sharing soil, there are a lot more benefits to it, but they're not. So that was a point that I didn't need to make. Be interested to see how the coconut palms do. I'll probably be doing some moving. I don't know if I'll be keeping them exactly where they are. The uh, main thing with them is to not keep them too wet and not let them get too dry. That's, <laughs> that's gonna be the challenge. I'm keeping the humidity in here lower this year too, only because I noticed when pulling some of the Halloween stuff out from the attic, there is like sludge on some of the totes. So I think the humidity last winter was somehow getting up there. I had painted the ceiling in here with three coats of a, I don't even remember what it was called. It was a high gloss water resistant type paint that's like has the kills and stuff in it, uh, like a liquid barrier. But still, there's some gaps over there that so you can access the attic. And you can even see it when it snows outside. If you're in the driveway, you can look up and there's a perfect rectangle on the roof where the snow melts. That's where the heat comes up. And there's maybe I just need to find a better way to seal up that hole. It'd probably be a smarter thing to do, both for just resources for holding in the heat and to keep the moisture out from up there. Regardless, I turned the humidity down to 50%. It was up like 75%. Right now it's reading 33%. That's not great. That's because that garage door is just open for several minutes though. And that lets all the humidity out when that happens. When I bring the plants back in, after I move them back out to spray them up and clean them, spray them up, spray them off and clean them off some, I might plastic the area like I used to do. Uh, it's something to think about. It's a lot of work, but it does have its benefits. The heater won't have to run as hard and uh, the humidity won't be as much of an issue every time the garage doors go up and down and up and down. Majority of the plants out here do not care about that. However, the uh, anthuriums, the Wauquianum and the Luxurians, they throw a fit having those doors open and close and the humidity going up and down, up and down. And uh, so I could, I could spend a lot of time and money plasticking off the area like I have done in many, 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 many times for many, many years. Or I can just tell those plants to kick rocks. I was really trying to find a way to say F off without cursing. It shouldn't have been that hard. And maybe just not keep those plants. That's what I would prefer to do, to be honest, because they haven't really brought me much joy. So there's no reason to keep them in my life. I don't like to fight things. If the plant and my growing style don't go together, it doesn't go together and I just won't grow that plant. I think that's much easier than making huge adjustments for just a couple of plants. I'd rather just not have them, just, they just go away. Uh, those are all things to think about. Still got plenty of time for that. I hope everybody's doing well. I know this is a, a weird video. I have some stuff going on that I will talk about next week. It's all good stuff, but I can't talk about it yet. And it's making it so that the videos have had to be pretty quick, short, and fast paced for lots of reasons. But next week, that should be over with. At least come next weekend's next weekend's vlog. Come next weekend's vlog. Talking is so tricky to talk sometimes when you're not actually talking to someone. Trying to stay on point and don't ramble, that just becomes even more difficult. Probably already surpassed the no rambling thing at this point, right? I, I think so. Oh, pool liner. It's finally in. Can't show it to you because there's somebody out there working on it. I don't know why it's taking so long. A project that was supposed to take four days is we're up at like six weeks now. But hey, the liner's installed, so that's good. It's supposed to be done in a few days and like actually full of water again. If that's the case, you all find out next week. And next weekend, there's going to be some fun stuff going on because I went to Lowe's to get a bag of potting soil and ended up leaving with four bags of potting soil 
and a entire flatbed full of plants, clearance plants, all things for outdoors, but they're neat looking plants. I mean, there's nothing unusual, but one of them is a fun, unusual plant that was a great deal. The rest of them is just like winter annuals, but we're gonna have some fun planting some stuff up. Has to just wait though, not there yet. It's killing me too. I wanna get out there and play with the plants, but it's 28 degrees, so I can warm up for a few days. And that's some other stuff that I gotta handle. Like I said, we'll talk about it next week. And so I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life. Everything's gonna absolutely beautifully for you. The bananas looked better. I need to repot this. That soil in there is just doing nothing for this plant at this point. Don't do it. Don't ramble. Got to stop. Don't do it. But down below, say hi <laughs> to the winter blast. Come through and hit everybody. It's Halloween today, and uh, trick-or-treaters are probably pretty cold. In fact, it's getting dark out. I'm surprised everyone showed up, but it's not that surprising. It's really cold out. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.